So, welcome everybody to Interactive Friction, Kingdom Hearts 0 0.2, Birth by Sleep, a fragmentary friggin' passage. You know, I thought we were out, Brandon. I thought we were done, and I told people the Kingdom Hearts prime was over, and I think it took about 3.6 seconds for people to start commenting, Hey, we're in, when are you doing Fragmentary Passage? That's like more Kingdom Hearts content, right? It's part of the story, right? And I'm like, oh, yeah. God. And, and they're not I wrong. felt bad. I mean, they're not wrong is the sad part. Yeah. Like, it, it is content that needs to be discussed for the primer. It's just... Barely, so, But though, it's such like... small amounts of content. <laughs> like, yeah. you're not missing much by playing this. Because uh, when we first finished the primer, one, this, when we first finished Core, this wasn't out. So that's why we didn't really think of it. Yeah. Uh, now that it was back cover. But... Uh, more importantly, what happened is I didn't have the game, and I didn't want to buy. It was like forty dollars resale, yeah. something like that. And I was like, I don't want to pay that kind of money for that thing. And so I waited till it was on sale, like two weeks ago or something, and finally bought it and played it in a night. So um, since we didn't really, I don't think we really did a lot of hunting for uh, movies for this, but when we did before, we couldn't find any. So what we're doing is, I am actually playing this one That's this is a, this this is an actual let's play for once in our fucking i know it's lives. been what like two and a half years since we actually played our let's plays yeah <laughs> like pre-primer because mirror's edge was all pre-recorded even though i played it so watchdogs yeah. is the last thing that we actually played which is good like there, there's a definitely cool aspect to yeah. playing the video game and reacting to things that we are doing but this wasn't the reason I bought this capture card, but since I do have it, we might as well make use of it. So. Uh, so what did you think of this remix <laughs> of the Simple and Clean soundtrack? I, I believe it's called the Ray of Hope remix. I think, I, if I remember correctly, I went into uh, one of our Discord channels with a friend of mm -hmm. ours who also plays this. And I was yeah. like, I fucking hate this remix. And he's like, no, it's so good. And I'm like, no, you're so wrong. Give me original Simple and Clean all day. I actually like this remix, I'll be perfectly honest with you. It's not terrible, but like, I don't need no fucking club mix of Simple and Clean, I mean, man. It's not it's not gonna beat the OG Simple and Clean, then that I will agree with you wholeheartedly. But I think it's good at, on its own in its own merits. Yeah, I guess. I think it's also something weird about it. It strikes me as very modern when like original Simple and Clean goes back to the early aughts, so like Listening to this is like, oh right, it's fucking 2017 and Kingdom Hearts still isn't finished. Yeah. Like something about the sound of it really drives that home to me. Uh, I understand. You know, I just had the scariest thought. Hmm. Uh, we might have to watch this twice. I think when you pick new game, it forces you to watch this a second time. Uh, when uh, I did that, I just skipped it. Oh, you can. I forgot. I didn't know if you skipped it or not. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Yeah. Thank Christ. I had that same problem. It's like I just watched this. Why are you showing this to me again? Why why would you why would that be a thing that they did? I don't know. Hmm. I mean to be fair, it's a good cinematic. It's a yeah. really well done cinematic. I don't even remember to make sure Tuttles run by before we start playing. Uh for realsies. Yeah. So uh real quick, Brandon, is this supposed to be in 4x3? Or is that just the stream? Oh, uh, that's just the screen. Okay, that's fine, though. Like I said, I don't it's give a shit. It, it's widescreen on my Okay, end. all I care about. As long as the output's <laughs> fine. Anyway, so this definitely exactly how the events transpired in Birth by Sleep, and it wasn't just a lot of people talking about nothing. <laughs> For reference, you can watch Kingdom Hearts Primer Birth by Sleep. I would hope if you're watching this one. Well, I guess available, I say that, but there might be people who are waiting just for this one because they're like, oh, I don't want to play 0 0.2, which is fair. Yeah. Like, also, it, it's not long. So, like, this, this, like, even though we're left playing this, this should be even shorter than the usual yeah, um, what, like, primer season. It's like two and a half hours, about. Um, my playthrough was roughly four, but I was playing on hard mode. Uh, yeah, see, when and I played I, it, it was like three, and that was and first playthrough. This, for the sake of flow, I might play on Piss Baby Easy. Might as well, because like I don't think there's much to talk about the com. Well, we will talk about the combat a little bit because I think it's slightly set up for three. But like, I, love that I really wouldn't bother with it. 
I love that experience gain just flat an option in, in this because there there is like there is a whole like contingency of people who were like no I want to play on level I want to play level one run of, of Kingdom Hearts because that's that community is actually very strong. Oh, I, so, I didn't think that was why that that makes total sense now. I didn't even consider that. Yeah, for a low level run of these games. <sighs> wow, that's so weird so, to see them acknowledge that community. They, that's cool though. They've done it in critical mode with just an ability that costs AP to use. Um, in previous games, but in this game, they just made it straight up just an option yeah. in the menu. That's that's really kick-ass that they acknowledge that community. And so far, it's like, yeah, it's a cool game to speed run or do, like, the level one boss runs. Because that's what I watched. It was, like, was it ADHQ this year? Like, last year, they did, like, a Organization yeah. 13 final mix run. Yeah, level, a level, level one, one critical mode. Cool. Uh, uh, so I'm going to carry yeah. over my sweet, sweet wardrobe. <laughs> just going to go in looking like a fucking idiot. We're gonna play on big, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. We're gonna play on easy because uh, that we're this LP. We like it. We were gonna talk about the gameplay, of course, but it's about the story primarily. Yeah, so this is just for the sake of not getting impeded by dying, which happened a lot in our older LPs. Yeah, <laughs> although I I will say that I didn't die a single time when I played this game in my in my first run. I don't think I did, and I played on normal. I definitely got low, but the way that mana works, which is carried over from two, I think. Yeah. With the you deplete the bar, so like you could pretty much just always have cure ready. Yeah, it, it's not hard to get a he like to back off and get a heal. Yeah. All right. Keyblade Wars. That was the thing that yeah. happened. <sighs> and, and you don't know who this fucker <laughs> is unless you uh unless you play uh, or watched the back cover. Ah. Uh. Well, that's great because the, uh, as of this recording, I have not. But that's coming up next. So <laughs> yeah, that that is a character named Lushu, and we will go over to him during that um, <laughs> feature. So here's my question: Why is his zipper backwards? <laughs> because no more. <laughs> like somebody had to acknowledge that, right? Like somebody had to go to no more and be like, no more, no more. Son, his zipper is backwards. It's like it's fine. It's completely fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And this was, I remember my first time playing this, my first reaction was like, holy shit, look at these models. Yeah. Compared to uh, fucking I, 2 and Birth by Sleep. I alternate between them looking amazing and uncanny. It, for me, I think it's like Sora, Riku, Kari and all that definitely stretch that uncanny at times. It depends on like a lot of them. They seem really lighting dependent because sometimes they look mm -hmm. really flat. And sometimes they look like just good enough to be super awkward looking. <laughs> Yeah. But, like, if you catch him in the right light, like, there's some scenes with Aqua that just look fucking beautiful. Like, just hands down. Yeah, this is great. A, and, and, um, for those of you who weren't aware, for this game and for Kingdom Hearts 3 and the movie we're about to watch in a, in a second for us in probably a month for you, um, they switched to the Unreal Engine. In the realm of darkness. That's true. It was Unreal, is it 5, I think is what this runs uh, on? 4. But, Unreal 4. Okay. Um, Unreal Engine 4. Um, which is a really good engine for them, <laughs> uh, especially compared to what they were working with before. Yeah, really. Like, it's it's a definite step up, and I think it offers them a lot in terms of more physics they can work with, more objects, and obviously just way more, like, yeah. rendering tech based out. So, uh, let's hope there are no audio cues, because I'm actually not hearing any of the game audio for recording purposes. <laughs> not that I remember. Uh, yeah. It's been a while since I actually played, but it's Kingdom Hearts. It's kind of it's really easy to pick up and play these games. Yeah, that's actually one of their strongest points is that um, for all the the grief we have and probably will give this story in the future, um, these games play phenomenally well. Yeah. God no, no tutorial. Fuck tutorial. Uh, I love that's actually like that's smart. Just giving you a tutorial skip option. That's true. Because. Uh, for pe people like me who are coming back to this game, that's just like a tutorial is just an annoying part of like I know how to play Kingdom Hearts. It's it's real, or even people who who play previous games, it's like I have played Kingdom Hearts before. I know how it works. You do not need to tell me how it works. And yet for me, it had been so long since I actually played a Kingdom Hearts game that I kept hitting the fucking uh, X button to jump and then just start swinging my Keyblade everywhere. And I'm like, oh right, Japanese game, yeah. right? But it's it's. But yeah, for people who haven't played in a while, that's that's a valuable yeah. to have that there. I, I think I totally used it because I was it's a like, good it's way been to, a while. 
She's making Ashul is a great way to toe the line. Um, I, and like I, I'm harping, I'm like saying this small choice is amazing, but a lot of games, especially Kingdom Hearts games, <laughs> have overwrought, overly long tutorials. True. So, for them to to kind of get away from that in this game is it's nice. Like I love the Roxas section in Kingdom Hearts 2, but that tutorial, that tutorial parts of it are just that's an hour of time <laughs> that I could I'd rather have playing Kingdom Hearts. Uh, <laughs> so I guess uh, we'll talk a bit more about this place in the story as we get to cutscenes. But real quick, uh, as someone who has played all of them, how do you feel about the combat in this? I really enjoy the combat in this game. Because <laughs> the last one I like, played was 2, for reference. So, like, like for me, this is, was a huge leap forward in terms of its like, systems. Yeah, like, like it's it's only, like, four hours, as we said. But this game, this this the play, it, it feels so good when your hands. Uh, it... it and, and we'll get into it when the magic comes out, but Aqua's magic is so strong. <laughs> She's a good character it, to have for this because her magic is fucking busted. And it feels so good to play her in this. Um, I guess I but I guess uh, since we're, we're talking a little bit about the story, uh, they just dropped a factoid that in the Realm of Darkness, time just kind of doesn't exist. So, it, while you could be here for what feels like a month to you, it could in fact be a decade. Which is right. the, how they explain why Aqua hasn't aged at all in the past ten years. Mm. Also, uh, for those out there who may not know this offhand, or like may have sketchy memories of Birth by Sleep, this takes place after Birth by Sleep, leading up to the events of the end of Kingdom Hearts 1? Yes, uh, the, the end of Kingdom Hearts 1 is the end of this game. Right. Um, and again... As this primer, primer tradition, we don't give a shit about spoilers here. Yeah. Uh, so, um... Because this is getting you ready for Kingdom Hearts 3. So. You have been warned. So yeah, if you were looking for this for us to have, you know, first time impressions of this, it's more like we're just getting people prepared for 3, so it's like, here's the key points you need to know. I also like that they start Aqua off at level 50. As yeah. opposed to level 1. Just to give, her, give you a sense that she has gone through some shit. It's funny because I had that thought too. Where when it, when there was a uh, one of the objectives that we might bring up later, uh, there's like little objectives you can do for yeah. playing the game. Was like reach level sixty or something, and I was like, holy shit, that's a lot of grinding. Then you realize you started level fifty. Yeah, because she's already been like through a whole game. Yeah, but you're always you're going through a hun uh, hundreds of experience per kill in in this game. Yeah. Uh, I think I also appreciate appreciate that just because most RPGs' tendency is to completely strip the character every new game. And it's like, alright, you're level 1, you don't know anything anymore. It's like, Aqua's Appar like, oh, she didn't forget anything. Apparently in canon, the way they explain it is that Aqua breached level 99 and birth by sleep, but then the darkness eroded her strength a little bit. <laughs> so she's not so she's not ultra broken, she's only kind of broken. Uh <laughs> only a little bit broken. I like it. That's why I like my character, slightly broken. <laughs> Because I don't know, because I, I don't know if we talked about it a whole lot in the Birth by Sleep season, but I, I I remember saying flat out that Aqua, out of the three characters in that game, she is the strongest character because she has all the magic, and the magic in that game with with the command deck system is so powerful. You get the so many god tier spells out of her. So I remember that Rollberry ice cream. <laughs> So yeah, let's go through flashbacks to, I assume, the HD version of Birth by Sleep, because, oh god, the PSP graphics. Original. Oh, memories. Yeah, so, um, sometime between the events of Birth by Sleep and uh, Kingdom Hearts 1, a lot of worlds fell to darkness, including three of the worlds that Aqua went to, which were the uh, Enchanted Forest from Sleeping Beauty, the Castle of Dreams from Cinderella, which is where we're at now, and um, the Dwarf Woodlands from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Uh, so, 
those worlds fell to darkness, and Aqua has just arrived at the decayed husk of the Castle of Dreams. Okay. So See, that's where we're at now. So here's my first question that probably has no good answer. What happens if Aqua is in this world and someone like Sora were to bring it back to light? Uh, they touch on that actually briefly um, at the end of this game because this game takes place at the end of Kingdom Hearts 1 where right. she's at Destiny Islands and Destiny Islands does come back. That's um, true. And she just kind of drifts over to another world of dark <laughs> world darkness. Okay, so they do discuss that a little bit. I couldn't remember for sure. I don't discuss funny it, thought. it's just kind of implied by what happens. Sure. It's a lot of Kingdom Hearts, just a lot of figure it out yourself. <laughs> so, uh, real quick, if we want to talk about objectives, one of the early ones is like, I think it's like hit 20 lampposts or something. So for the yeah. first like 10 minutes of the game, I found myself just running around wailing on all the lamps to finish this objective so that you can get a bunch of yeah. stupid shit like cat ears. <laughs> like, it's great. Should we, should we just show off some of that once the scene's I... over? Yeah, I feel like since the like important story cutscenes don't show the outfits anyway, we have to dress up a little bit and show yeah. it off because it because is part of the game. In my run, I didn't actually do a lot of customization at all. Oh, I that's all I, I did. I, I well, because you're you. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta play as you call it, pretty dress up with all my characters. Yeah, I love that phrase, pretty dress up. It's, <laughs> it's not the way of describing what you're doing with the characters. <laughs> Oh man, I got so into it. Like it got me like completing objectives just to figure out like what it would give me. Yeah. So um, our our mission will be to uh, bring to since time doesn't flow in the world of darkness. The only the Aqua concludes that um, the only reason that bridge class because the clock moved forward, not time moving forward because time doesn't move in the world of darkness. So the idea is that if she can find a way to reverse the clock, the bridge will come back. Sure. That makes enough sense. Because time doesn't flow, so the bridge can't just collapse. It doesn't have time to collapse, literally. That's a strange but fascinating implication of this world's, like, <laughs> physics. It's like, it, yeah. it's like you could just say the bridge got old, but it's like, it crumples, like, but there's well, no time for it to do yeah, that. It, it's stuck in a does, permanent it, state of whatever it came in. It's stuck in stasis forever. Yeah. Such a weird implication. Also, the particle effects in, in this engine look so good. <laughs> yeah. It's it's really beautiful. Uh, as a bit of a side note, related to Unreal, is um, to date the hell out of this video, me and you recently got Tekken 7, which also runs on yeah. Unreal. And it's so weird to see Unreal, like, come back, because for a couple of years there, everybody's using their own engines. Like, yeah. it used to be, like, everybody used their own engine, and then around, like, the Xbox 360 generation, everybody used Unreal, and then it went back to everybody using their own tech. And now we're back to Unreal again. Like, all these Japanese devs are picking up Unreal. So I don't know if you know this, Sam, but you can actually, like, in this game, you can use Blizzard on the ground to make grind rails. I did notice that, but I didn't make enough use of it. Yeah. It's like, it's not quite the uh, the flow motion that Dream Drop Distance had, but it's like, okay, you can use magic in other ways that aren't purely combat-based, which is really cool. Yeah. Which, again, I really hope that um, they touch on that more in 3. Although... A lot of it is hoping, like, I hope that 3 has the customization stuff, because that'd be super fun and give you more stuff to do. I hope that you, you can use magic to dress up, combat. You, you just want to dress Sora up in weird I mean, I really, I, I really want to dress Riku up, more importantly. <laughs> I, re I need this, Brandon. I need we this. Even, we don't even know if Riku is playable in 3. We don't. Yet, even though but, he, like, he's, he's been playable, like, the last four games. Like, come on. <laughs> I feel like they, they've they got it. Like, 3 has got to be at least Sora and Riku, if not Sora, Riku, and Kairi. It but, right? I would like. I know we said this before, but I would be really angry if Kyrie is not playable because they've shafted her so I know. hard. <laughs> and they make it over... such a deal, like in this game, of her being like, "Okay, I'm gonna be a Keyblade yeah. Master." Even at the end of Dream Drop Distance. Yeah. Like, come on, it's gotta be. But at the very least, give me fucking Riku and let me customize yeah. Riku. But I don't know, it's funny that, like, Aqua's playable in this, which makes you think, like, maybe Aqua could be playable at some point, and then, like... I think she became a fan favorite, uh, um, in, uh, after yeah. Birth by Sleep. Like, I know I and a lot of people were, were very much in the pro-Aqua camp. Yeah, Aqua's after great. That game. She's the only good part of Birth by Sleep. I, I don't know, this is me just... This is very wishful thinking right now, but I I think the coolest one of the coolest ways you could do Kingdom Hearts three is instead of just making it Sora, 
you would make it more of an ensemble cast story where it's like, okay, you're gonna play Sora for a large chunk, but you're also gonna play as Riku and Aqua mean? and Lee and like all these other characters for little bits of the game. You mean like like an Odin sphere kind of thing? Yeah, but you don't need to segment it that much. Like oh, I wouldn't be uh, like uh, if it was like 80% Sora, that's fine. But it'd be so cool if like characters had their own missions to do. Or like and you you haven't played uh, or a lot of um, Assassin's Creed Oranges yet. But um, there are segments in that game where you play as as Bayek's wife Aya, right? And that would be pretty cool if, like, a, like after you complete like a main story objective in, in, in as Sora, you have like a brief segment where you played as the game through some other character's perspective. Yeah, I'm trying to think of, like just, a better example. Then we would go yeah. back to Sora. I just think that would be really fascinating. Be I, it'd be a lot of work in terms of like animations and such, but like they already have Aquas. So that's why I'm like, they could probably do her. I feel like Riku's got to be a given, because like, he's been the last, like, four or so. I feel like, if assuming that they actually train Kyrie in the interim, which they, they have repeatedly hinted at, it wouldn't be that much of a stretch yeah. to uh, to use Aqua's um, animations on Kyrie, or at least fudge them a bit. Yeah, I was thinking, I think the only thing is Aqua's slightly taller, but that's about it, as far as, like, yeah. rigging is concerned. I don't know, like I said, it's a bit wishful thinking, but, like, we've been waiting what like over a decade for kingdom hearts 3 at this point like i can wish all i want at some point yeah <laughs> like this game's been developed for so long that you're just like what is kingdom hearts 3 even gonna be at this point well they spent so much time pissing around with side games they really that did. have been that have actually ended up being important to the main game which yeah prior to this primer again for people who may have be just joining us now as opposed to the beginning I played 1 and 2, and then I was under the assumption that the rest of them were just side stories. And I was like, it's fine, I'll just play 3 when it comes out. I mean, very technically they are side stories, but only very technically. Yeah, like, um, you could- they, I am sure that 3 will have some kind of story recap and go through all of it, but like, man, you really should play those games or yeah. watch them or something, cause Like, could God. you imagine what you would have been like if you had not done this, this series before? Oh like, can you imagine how lost you would have been? I, I just imagine me just sending you PMs, like, every two minutes of, like, who the fuck is this character? Like, what's going on? Why is he talking about, like, young Xehanort? Who the fuck is that? Like, And instead of spending an hour explaining to you then, I spent months yeah. and, and years <laughs> explaining it to you over the course of, of the Primer series. You know what you think about it that way? Maybe it was a better idea. I should just... <laughs> I should have just asked you a bunch of questions up front. You know what? We, we had fun, though, so... Yeah. Also, what's done is done. There's no going yeah. back on that, so. I have at least had some people say they enjoyed the series, so you know what? If if y'all enjoyed it, that warms my heart. <laughs> some, yeah. Somebody did. Not even my 